Aloha everyone, this is May 22nd and 23rd of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. Transitioning into May 22nd, early in the morning, activity along the fissure system remains high. Most of the fissures are active off screen to the left of this PG cam shot, whereas fissure 6 there, you can see active at this point. Now fissure 22 is the predominant fissure right now, and it's feeding this channelized flow down to the ocean where it's making entry. There's now only one single spot making entry. This second channel, which was coming down and helping feed the ocean entry, has had a breakout upslope where lava is now pathing down along the east side of the previous lava flow. Back upslope at the eruption site, the fissure line is emitting a tremendous amount of SO2, sulfur dioxide and this is true at both the inactive and the active vents. The amount of SO2 that has been emitted at this point is multiple times higher than the early stages of the eruption. We see how this one channelized flow is moving down towards the ocean creating some very small littoral explosions but otherwise is similar to the previous days. Here we catch a small glimpse of Fo'oiki, also known as the Isaac Hale Beach Park. This here is Fisher 6 on the corner of Leilani Avenue and Fo'oiki Road. Fisher 6 is producing a very fluid lava flow that is working its way down slope, crossing Hanalo Street in the process and claiming even more homes. Fissure 6 is one of the transitionary fissures as activity continues to work its way back up the rift zone. It has become more active on May 22nd. Moving over to Fissure 22, the eruptive vent remains very fluid, very active, with lava still encroaching upon the Puno Geothermal Venture. By this point, the power plant has been able to quench 11 of the 12 wells that are operational and there is one troublesome well that they're having issues with. Lava is still encroaching upon the facility but it's mostly overflow lava that is coming outside of the lava channel near the vent. Most of the lava is going down away from the power plant itself. You can see this bend in the lava channel that wraps around the fissures before falling downhill and these overflows from a slightly perched pond that has formed around the fissure itself. There's still a lot of lava in here, and a lot of this lava is hotter than the lava that we've seen so far. In this clip, the activity at Fissure 22 is slightly diminished from the previous, and with that, the level of the lava around the base of the fissures has decreased as well, exposing some of the levees and features of the lava channel that has been forming over the previous days. Now this is what I call the Mordor clip. This video right here was some of the most mind-blowing video that I saw out of the eruption. And it's really, in terms of videography, nothing special. The exposure's bad. The camera work looks like it was taken out of Cloverfield with all that shakiness. But just look how much lava there is it really is a crazy amount of lava out there. And during the day, you can't really see it that well. Even with the best camera work, the differences between the hardened lava and the still hot molten stuff is pretty minuscule. You can tell the difference between the shades of gray, but at night, it's just so much easier to see how much of this lava flow is still hot, is still molten. In this thermal map from USGS on May 22nd, we can see the breakout that has happened on the lava channel just upslope from the ocean entry, as well as the new flow front, which is coming down along the east side of the previous lava flows from Fisher 6. We begin May 23rd down at the ocean entry at Malama Flats. The ocean entry hasn't changed significantly over the past day still being fed primarily by one channelized flow coming down from Fisher 22. Ocean entry is rather volatile, but at this point it's stable. 
the winds have also been rather consistent down at the ocean entry, pushing the Lay's plume to the southwest. Looking back up slope, we can see this puff of smoke coming from the previous day's breakout. This is burning more foliage as it slowly tries to make its way back down to the ocean. Now, one of the things I'm reminded of here is how much the coloration of the smoke mattered in 2018. So here we see this very white plume coming from the ocean entry. The outbreak and the smoke coming from that was also pretty white. It's the very dark smoke that means that homes are being burnt. And when we saw dark smoke even from a ways away, it meant bad news for somebody. The eruption at Fisher 22 is not as vigorous as it was at the height of its activity. The fountaining is significantly less, as well as the amount of lava moving down the lava channel, as evidenced by the raised banks, the levees of the lava channel, and how much higher they are than the lava contained within them. While the activity at Fisher 22, as well as the fissures further down rift of it, start to diminish, the activity at the fissures right around Poehi Road in the intersection of Leilani Avenue are intensifying. These lava flows are continuing their march down to the ocean. This video clip starts over the Puno Geothermal Venture, and we are flying back up the rift zone. We're looking at Fisher 22, moving into Fisher 6, and then into Lower Leilani Estates and the earliest fissures of the eruption. Now, most of Leilani Estates is still intact. Streets like Kalpili, where my parents had their property and their home was entirely consumed, yet most of the other homes on that street remain intact. The gas emissions have radically discolored the vegetation. On the north side, which is the bottom of the video, we're still green, and on the south side, on the top, it's brown. And this is due to the predominant wind patterns pushing the sulfur dioxide to the south. What do you think is going on, Phil? Oh, I just came out here for the first time in a while, and I first thing I noticed is this huge perch pond up there. You see this made a big rim, like a, big, like a giant raised swimming pool, all full of lava. It's all moving down and towards the ocean, right through the gap over there. But if you look farther left, there's another one, another pond that's going to perch down there below. So it looks like there's a, at least a series of a couple of them. So right here in a row, we see five fissures that is pretty much pumping lava right now. So this is the main one, one of the main ones here. As night falls on May 23rd, we hear of another perch pond forming at Fisher 6. Now this perch pond is roughly 11 meters or 36 feet deep and is, contains a significant amount of lava. Now one of the concerns about these perch ponds is what happens when the levee breaks and lava surges out from the collection point. And this is a concern that will continue as lava transitions further up the rift zone, creating more perch ponds. That'll do it for May 22nd and May 23rd from the 2018 eruption. We saw as lava flows began coming down from Fisher 6, as well as a breakout from the lava channel that was making ocean entry. We also saw the continuation of the transition in phase two of the eruption of lava moving back up the rift zone. Thank you for joining me. Until the next one, aloha.